Welcome back to the workshop. Today I'm going to be making Nokvra's sword from Elder Scrolls Online. It is a massive multiplayer online role-playing game and they are sponsoring this episode. There's 18 million players worldwide. It's set in the continent of Tamriel. If you're unfamiliar to the game, think elves, orcs and all sorts of other magical beasts. Well, Blackwood, the biggest installment of a year-long chapter called Gates of Oblivion, will be launching for all players. With the game set to hit Xbox Series X and PlayStation, 5 as a free upgrade, we're celebrating the launch by creating a stunning weapon from the new chapter. Because with this new chapter comes a host of new content, including new cool weapons. And so let's jump right into the design work of Nokvra's sword. Right, so we've got this thing drawn out, and it's a whopping 115 centimeters long. It's a big boy. And one of the huge challenges in this project is we need to have this blood red glowing strip down the middle of it. So it means we're gonna have to integrate some electrics into the thing. It's gonna be awfully complicated, but for now, I'm gonna get this forge lit so that we can forge out the blade and start making some progress. We've been putting some time in at the grinder. Let me tell you, this thing is a whopper of a sword. Very chunky. And we are pretty close to the actual drawing. We're a little thinner halfway down to the tip. But overall, I am very happy with how she's going. But I'm also very daunted about what is to come in the manufacture of this piece. Woohoo! We're gonna light the forge. And I'm gonna try and make up a big, huge rectangle from which we can hopefully carve this monstrous and ornate guard. This guard is proving very difficult. What I just did is I just welded on some extra little bits that would hopefully form these spikes. However, as we're looking at this more, I think the proportions are a little bit out of whack. This here is just too thin. The ends of the guard are pulled too far away from the center and they're not long enough. So what I think I'm gonna do is scrap this one and start again. Put some more steel in the fire and hopefully make a better guard this time around. We're almost back to where we were. And I've also got a printout to hopefully not make more mistakes. So my plan of action on this iteration is to get the profile done first before I do any of the funky contours. Saying that, as you can see, I did a little bit of contouring, but we can just forget about that and talk about my next step, which is gonna be actually putting the slot and hole in here for the blade and the tang. I wanna do that now before I start carving these contours and these grooves. And the reason for that is extremely scientific, very important, extremely deliberate. What do you mean you want to get out of the grinding room? It means I want to get out of the bloody grinding room. <laughs> to the mill! Thing is diabolical. Heck yeah. 
I like the look of that. Question is, where is she sticking? We've now got the fit up. We're gonna finalize the contour. I'm now gonna work on the piece's surface finish using some heat <laughs> scaler. So while this was cooling down, what I went ahead and did is I made this little piece up in the lathe. It's a threaded nut for this block that will become the pommel that I started milling up earlier. And the way the sword will go together is I'm going to thread the end of the tang. It will fit into here. The nut will then screw the pommel to the sword, holding it all tight together. So now I've got to get cracking on sculpting the pommel. There's lots of carving to do on the grinder. And I'm also going to need to weld on a bit of pipe so that we can form this section out of steel as well. It's now on to these bad boys. We've done some serious surface finishing. The blade is looking fantastic. And what we've got to do now is tackle our lighting conundrum. We've got to have some red running down the blade. And as you can see, I've got an assortment of lighting devices here on the table. This right here is electroluminescent wire, which means that when you hit a magic button, little electron fairies go swimming down the wire making it glow. Let's turn off the lights. Ooh, but this is pink. That's no good. This one's a little wide. This is a little thin and a little pink. We even tried bedding it in epoxy to see what we think. This one's quite nice, but I think this is just right. But first things first, I think we can head to the mill and cut ourselves a three millimeter wide groove for the wire. It's groovy. Good, that's, that's all. So the plan will be, I have the EL wire come down from one side. We'll be gluing it in place, slipping it through the other side and folding it back on itself. And then the EL wire will continue to thread through the groove, through the guard, through the handle and out of the pommel where it'll plug into a battery pack. So it's time to head to my father's wood workshop.
awesome does this look? It's a glowing sword, it works! This thing is diabolical, it's so heavy, it's so chunky, and it glows. Big thank you to Elder Scrolls Online for sponsoring this video. If you've enjoyed watching me make this sword, please go enjoy this sword and play with it in-game. Go play through Blackwood, the latest year-long story available now on the Elder Scrolls Online. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Thank you guys for watching. Check them out in the description below. Bye-bye.